The inspectors of election report that each nominee for election as director has received at least 88% of the votes cast in favor of their election. Therefore, all of the director candidates have been elected to serve as a director until 2012. The management proposal on the ratification of Ernst & Young as auditors has been approved with an affirmative vote of 99%. The two management proposals on approving the performance criteria under the Performance Incentive Plan and the 1989 Restricted Stock Award Plan to preserve the tax deductibility of the awards have both been approved with affirmative votes of 97% and 96% respectively. The management proposal on the advisory vote on executive compensation has been approved with an affirmative vote of 97%. The management proposal on the frequency of the advisory vote on pay received 89% of the votes for a frequency of every year. The Sheriner proposal regarding a report on BPA received a negative vote of 74%. Thank you, Gloria, and thanks um, to all of you um, once again for uh, voting, for your interest. Again, please uh, raise your hand if you have a ballot and uh, someone will be there to collect it. So I would conclude uh, with this that the business portion of the meeting is adjourned, and uh, now uh, we'll go to the uh, Q&A session. So um, as we've already um, addressed a number of questions and, uh, previously on a variety of topics, um, I'll plan to take uh, questions at this moment um, um, before we conclude with a uh, sort of celebratory uh, toast. So um, I'll call on paddle number nine in the back. Mr. Chairman, this is Jeffrey Wright. He's representing uh, shareholder Frank L. Schneider. Hey, Mr. Kent. My name is Jeffrey Wright. I want to know, is it the policy of the board to continue to bus unions in Columbia, outsourcing subcontracting a scam to turn empl uh, regular employer into non employer A large majority of coke workers in Columbia are outsourced. Workers wear coke uniforms, drive coke truck, receive minimum pay, no job security, benefits, fired if they try to join a union. These workers are very unhappy about their condition. In April 2007, 16 subcontract workers were fired for trying to join a Columbia Food Workers Union. These workers was warned all to subcontract workers not to join the union. In the Coca-Cola system, you have no rights without a union. I know since I was a Coca-Cola worker here in Atlanta. Union President Shaver Quarren reported that on December 10th, the police entered the Coca-Cola bottle in the city of Matwell, authorized by the president of Coca-Cola. They, they entered in fear, pressure, subcontracted worker who was protesting and organizing. The police remained in the Coca-Cola bottling plant 24 hours a day, terrorizing workers. In the film, the Coca-Cola case, two Columbia workers were asked, are you unionizing? They said no. They can't join the union because they'll get fired. How much do you make today? They answer $15 for 15 hours. After being a part of a similar situation here in the United States, I was forced to write a book, What Coca-Cola Did to Stop the Union from Coming In, which described criminal charges against two top Coke executives for being indicted for bribing me from for keeping a union out. Mr. Kent, are the board are going to allow a these hazard working conditions to continue in, our, in your plant in the Columbia and the United States. Thank you, Mr. Bright. Um, what I'd like, I think we've covered some of the Columbia um, matters, but let me just once again state, um, once again, workplace human rights are a very high priority for the Coca-Cola company. Around the world, I repeat, Coca-Cola workers all around the world are free to exercise their rights to union membership and collective bargaining without any pressure and without interference. We have one of the highest number of union employees as a system in the world, more than 140,000 all across the world. 
During the, and, and, and again, um, we have established significant number of guidelines all in the past four or five years to make sure that we get better in this area. During the past four years, we've made the following systematic changes in our global system. We've joined the business leader initiative, business leaders initiative on human rights, short for BLIHR in 2007. A group of 12 leading global companies, including uh, ABB, General Electric, HP, Novartis, and others, just to make sure that we can identify practical ways of applying human rights principles within our business context. In 2009, our company became a founding member of the Global Business Initiative on Human Rights. In 2007, again, a few years back, we adopted our workplace rights policy. We're making that even stronger and better now. We also adopted a human rights statement back at the end of two, beginning of 2008. In 2009, we, uh, we took our work with uh, the Business Leaders Initiative one step further, engaging uh, a Danish Institute for Human Rights to review, so a third party to review our global policies and identify uh, areas uh, where we can improve. Um, and then we've joined the UN Global Compact and also uh, signed a joint statement with the IUF, the International Organization for Food and Beverage Unions, conf confirming uh, that Coca-Cola workers are allowed to exercise rights to union membership as well as collective bargaining without any pressure or interference. Those are just a few things that we have done in the past few years, three years, four years, so that we can get even better in terms of standing behind our stated values and policies. Um, thank you.